G'day! If you're like me, and you've been watching Fallout, and you're keen to play Fallout New Vegas on your Android phone, this one here is pretty banged up, but what I want to do, let's get the crease into a better location for you guys, what I want to do is download a program called WinLater. So if I search WinLater GitHub, this is almost like a Windows emulator that runs on Android. From there, we need this, we need the GOG, copy of Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas and from there we should be able to achieve what we're setting out to do. I do have also a GameSir X2 which when paired will work in game on this so I don't have to do any form of controller mapping to make it function for me. So I am only covering what I've done personally but if we go to the WinLater GitHub site we have down here download APK from the GitHub releases we want to tap on that we want to download a 253 meg version, which is version 6.1. We want to go download, and we play the waiting game. Won't take too long. Now, do take, do note, I have already got the installation files copied onto my phone. Funnily enough, I've got the Steam version of it, and I could not figure out how to get it on there. So it was just easier for me just to purchase the GOG version, which I know most people usually recommend works, and works just fine. So now that downloaded, I want to run it. It's going to complain that I need to allow permissions, which I'm going to allow it. And I'm going to install. Oh, we were blocked. Install product anyway. Done. I'm going to go allow. Now it's installing its installation files. If I turn the brightness up, that may help. There we go. Do you have a bit of banding I can see on my camera? Please try to ignore that. Sorry about your eyes. Now the reason why I'm installing it on a Z Fold 4 that's broken is a current or oh, Z Fold 3 that's broken is I've got a Z Fold 2 which has a Snapdragon 865 in it and it plays between playing Fallout New Vegas between uh, 60 or 30 to 60 FPS depending on where I am potentially as low as 20 so it's playable but I'm also curious to see how well this will run it in comparison once we've done this I just need to remember what I needed to do there we go, I'll go to container and I'll call it Fallout. I'm going to change the resolution to something a bit larger. When I was playing it the other night, I was going 1280 by 800. And if I go tick the box from there, we'll go creating container. I want to tap on it and go run. From here, it's going to load up what seems like almost a Windows installation. We'll have to give it some time. It will it will vary depending on what kind of mobile device that you have. Also, one thing that I have forgotten about is when you do copy your files over, so when you've downloaded the offline installer for Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas, if I go to internal storage and download, it needs to be in this folder here. As you can see, we have a few different files. We have the setup exe, which is 0.93 meg. That's the one we're going to run. We need these two bin files, and then there's a patch. On my first install, I didn't bother running the patch at all. I just merely ran the installer, and the game seems to be fine. I'm not sure what the patch brings. It's different, so I haven't worried about it as I haven't really encountered any dramas. Once we load up here, first thing we do want to do is A, find where the mouse is. So I'm pulling that there. Now I've got it. First thing before we run the installer, or else you'll get stuck on a .NET install that will never finish when you go to install the game, is we need to run Wine Mono Installer. If I tap on that, minimize this. Be fairly precise with the mouse. There we go. Wine could not find one cannot find one mono package installer which is needed for .NET applications to install correctly. One will automatically download and install this for you. We want to go install. 
I do. I haven't actually told this to connect to a Wi-Fi. It's already connect. I believe it's just piggybacking through the Android Wi-Fi network that I've already joined. Here we go. Now, I'm not sure how long this may take for you, as this is now, this particular one is, the Z Fold 3 is running a Snapdragon 888, which is a bit more powerful than the 856. Not sure how much, that's why I'm purely doing this experiment to find out. But I thought I'd bring you guys along for the journey. I'm just gonna put that down for a second, and I'll resume once this is finished. What does I see, actually? What's this one here? Oops, sorry, got to go to frame. So even though it feels like it's not doing really much at all, I do believe it's doing most of it in the background for us. Can't bring that up with a double tap. There we go. From here, I think we're okay to proceed. So once that's happened, we want to go down to computer once more. Then we want to go into Z Drive, storage, If it lets me, there we go, emulated. And this should be emulating the download, the download folder on your phone. Once I can click through them enough. There we go, we're in the download folder. Now I want to run the nine or 910 kilobyte setup file. Let me. There we go. I may have double tapped, triple tapped. I've got two setups. No. Setup OK. There we go. We're about to start the installer for the Fallout Ultimate Edition. Yes. I don't believe in options, there's really much we can do. Unless you want to change where it's installed. There we go. And now I'm just going to run the installer zoom you guys in. I will probably fast forward the vast majority of this installation process and then we'll proceed to the next stage from there. But we will have the bar progressing along here. Eventually it will say it's installing .NET and it will also say installing DirectX 9C. It may come up with an error along that way but we should be able to continue and proceed to install the game from there. Eventually it should finish and we should get an install icon up here for the Fallout game. From there, I'm not going to cover any form of controller mapping. I will show you me pairing a Bluetooth con uh, GameSir X2 up to this, which if you have an X, I believe an Xbox compliant or X input controller, I believe it's X input, I may be wrong, that might be the PlayStation one that I'm thinking of. But if you've got anything that gets detected as an Xbox or Xbox controller when it's connected up to a Windows PC, you should be able to pair it to this or connect it via type C and hopefully have Fallout natively pick that up for you without any need for you to manually configure the buttons. Or at least that's what happened on the other phone. So we'll let this install go. So the last section took about eight minutes, and now we're up to in installing .NET 4, as you can see here. We will also get to DirectX. On the last phone I installed this on, I did experience errors, but I just hit OK, and it continued on from there. There we go, we're now up to Visual C++, Redistribution 2012. And we didn't actually produce any errors this time. Brilliant. So what I want to do now is quit out of WinLater. I'm just going to close it. 
and I want to turn my game sir X2 on and go into Bluetooth. Bingo, so now this is all happily paired up. I want to load up Win Later once more. Now, if I should be able to verify that it's talking to it. If I go here, I've got external controllers, Game Sir, keyboard. I'm going to leave all that exactly as it is, as I don't need to worry about it pretty much at all. If I go shortcuts, I've now got the Fallout New Vegas shortcut. Now, it may crack it with me just because I'm loading it up for the first time now. But we'll see where we get to. There we go. Fallout New Vegas will detect your video settings. Set to high. I don't want to have it on high. I want to have it on low. I'm going to leave VSync enabled as well. It does think it's emulating a 9800 GT. So I'm going to have VSync on, low, then I'm going to go OK, then I'll simply go play. From here I'll move the mouse out of the way, we should go full screen, and from there I should be able to use the GameSir X2 for the game. Turn the audio up a little bit. I press start over here. I should be able to skip menus, uh, maybe not yet. Now this will chew through battery life quite, <laughs> quite heavily. So do be aware that your phone will drain battery quite, yeah, quite a bit. As you can see, working as exactly as it should. Now we'll have to go new game. Start a new game, there we go. Skip that. Now frame rate in game, in inside buildings, is considerably better than outside in the big world. So I'm going to skip this video. I'm going to let it start, just so you get an idea on how long it takes to load here. But after that, I'm going to just skip to outside the docks office. Right now it's just talking about all the expansions that have been added, all the items. So the frame rate's a bit jumpy here, but other buildings I've gone into, it's been okay. Press the right button. This will give you an idea of the loading times between rooms from inside, going from inside to outside. And the phone, back of the phone is starting to get a bit warm to the touch. It's not exactly burning, but I'd say it is definitely processing, that's for sure. There we go. And now we're out in the wasteland. So as I said, the frame rate's not exactly great outside. I think you'd be quite heavily relying on VATS or you'd be further tweaking the game to make it a bit more smoother. But anyway, I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea on what you may be able to play, or <laughs> how you can potentially play Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3. I haven't tried Fallout 4. I'm not a huge fan of Fallout 4, so I probably won't even bother. But if you've got a phone laying around that's of decent power, something like a Samsung Galaxy S20 FE or newer, you probably want to snap, oh, don't know how the other processors go. This one's running a Snapdragon 888. Seems to be okay. Audio seems to be playing just fine. Frame rate's a little low depending on where you are. As you see, as you're going up here the hill and looking over in great or fairly large areas, it seems to be relatively smooth. But I think I'll be relying on VATS during most of my combat. A little bonus feature. Very good Bluetooth controller does go flat. Press the back button. We toggle inputs. Show touchscreen for virtual gamepad. Okay. It's not great, but hey, it's something. That's for sure. Right now, I quit the game and then turn off the gamepad and then realize I probably want to save. 
and I was kind of screwed until I found that setting. There we go. Hope that helps you, and now I'll see you later. Bye.